real quick, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm, like I said, I'm kind of having to play with this hole a little bit, but using the edges of my drill bit, kind of like a, I guess like a router. You know, it's a pretty sharp bit. It's brand new. Um, trying to get it to where it's about three quarters of an inch so that I can get this fitting to go through there. And I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting close. And, uh, and then we'll put our nuts on and our O-rings and that side of it will be done. Like I said, I think I'm going to use a hot air gun across here and just kind of make this bubble out like this so that the worms heal. Um, collect there a little more than everywhere else. Okay, all right. I got my hole finished and like I, I, you know, we all know I was using a drill bit for the wrong reasons. But I didn't have the right size, so save me a eight mile hike to the store. But anyway, so what we're going to do, I put the first nut on here and then a an o-ring on it and it's just going to punch through like that right you can probably see that and then on the inside we're going to use another o-ring and the nut that originally came with it that one on the inside and we're going to keep that as uh, uh, as uh, close to the surface of the bucket as we can like i said that's about a quarter of an inch tall maybe not quite but um and that's about as that's about as low as I'm going to be able to get it. So like I said, I'm going to try and sink that thing a little bit so we get a little more drainage. Um, anybody has any better ideas on that, let me know. Okay. Now we're on to our... Um, first, let me show you what I did here. This is my bottom bucket that's going to catch the T. And uh, you can see I put the spigot down there. I'm going to set it up on two cinder blocks so that the spigot can hang, right? Because like I said, I want it as low as possible. And that's the inside. All right, I got my fitting in there. And that should hold the tea without it dripping out. Now we're going to start the second one, which is actually our first working tray. Um, and we're going to drill a whole bunch of quarter inch holes in it, right? Um, so that the worms um, can get air, right? They like a lot of air. And uh, the worm tea can drip out of it and moisture can drip out of it so they don't rot in there. It doesn't get all nasty. And that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to start with just start drilling holes. Okay. <laughs> This is our first working tray. That probably took me about, I don't know, five or ten minutes with a drill. Um, if you've got wimpy hands like I do these days, because I don't do a whole lot of physical work with my hands anymore, my hands are sore. <laughs> but that's okay. It's a good feeling. Um, i got to figure out a way to get all these little curls off of there. Uh, not sure what I'll do with that yet, but anyway, i make that as smooth as possible, I would assume. Probably some heavy sandpaper or something, just real quick. Um, and we got to do two more just like that. Okay, just real quick, uh, I wanted to put this in there. Uh, I got the curlies off for the most part. I'm hoping that that's good enough. Uh, I guess if the worms are that concerned about sharp objects, they shouldn't play with knives. Now, um, there should be plenty of room for them to crawl through, um, I think. <clears throat> but what I used was this uh, wood chisel. They're very, very sharp. And I used it with the uh, beveled edge down like that and just scraped across and pop those curlies off and for the most part they're gone. I'll clean it up a little bit more but anyway I just want to throw that in there. Okay this is where uh, it may get a little dicey because now I have to make a lid right and you can't just use this lid you want a lid that's actually going to slide down inside of the buckets. Right here's my buckets with all the holes I got three of them and um, you also want to take the um, handles off of it. What we're going to do is cut uh, just inside this line right right inside the inside lip there Right, all the way around and that's actually going to slide down inside of the bucket and we're going to take one of these handles and we're going to drill a couple holes here and that'll be the handle for our our lid and then we can just slide it down so that it'll, it'll rest on top of the uh, composting food and um, uh, I'm still allowed to, still allowed to breathe a little bit but also keep our worms in, worms in and our moisture in okay here is our almost finished worm bucket um, we've got the bottom one that I that I put the um, spigot in. We've got three of these, right, that have a whole bunch of holes in them. All right, you can see all the holes. A whole bunch of quarter-inch holes. Um, some people are using half-inch holes, but I honestly think that that's way too big. And it's worth the extra effort probably to make some smaller holes. Everywhere else that I've looked on how to make these, it said use quarter-inch bit. Some even said eighth-inch. Um, the guy that I saw these instructions from using a half inch, and that seems like it's kind of large. And then we uh, we cut the inside of that lid out, and we took one of the bucket handles, and we just kind of opened up the the uh, 
the crimp in the bucket handle a little bit so it would, and yeah you're gonna have to play with that get it to work you know work it in probably have to bend the lid a little bit to get that second uh part of the, the other half of the, the other side of the handle on and then this <clears throat> this is just going to sit down in there like that on top of our top tray of compost but you can see it's still going to allow some aeration and it's going to give just a little bit of pressure on top of the compost and then each of these um, buckets are going to fit down inside of there you want to make an eight inch line on the inside of the bucket um, and that's as high as you want to put your compost um, and once it's to there you start the next bucket um, now I'm not sure about ventilation I think because they're sitting like this there's going to be adequate ventilation but what I'm going to use um, in to fill this gap because of flies and larvae and all that kind of stuff um, I got to thinking about it and I what I wanted was some some kind of a, a mesh or something so what I went and bought I thought this was kind of ingenious was a uh, three pack of these um, um, uh, duct filters you know the for your furnace and uh, I'm just going to take the cardboard off and use the material on this material on the inside here and uh, right put the bucket on top of that and and uh, draw a line around it and cut it out as a circle and then go out about another inch and cut another circle and it's basically going to become like a gasket that fits around the bucket and when you slide the bucket in it'll slide in with it you may have to just you know push down on the edges of it a little bit to seal it but um, that should allow us to still get enough ventilation and keep the flies out of it. Pretty cool, huh? Just about done. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. I took um, the bottom of one of these buckets and I set it down there. And I just traced around it. You should be able to see the black line around it. And then what I did was go about an inch out from there. Um, and I cut the outside out first because then I could, you know, handle it easier. Um, but <laughs> this is what it creates is my little bucket tutus. Um, and like I said, they'll be about like that. So you're, you know, you're going to end up shoving them down to keep them, uh, uh, keep the flies and stuff out of it. So I just thought that was kind of a neat little thing that I, I haven't seen it anywhere else, but I like the idea. So I thought I'd share it. All right, here we go. This is my finished product, I believe. Um, I didn't put any aeration holes in the sides anywhere, um, simply because of this. All right, my little gasket. And the bucket's going to sit in there slightly loose, so you should have air all the way around. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good or a, you know, if I should go ahead and drill holes or not, but um, the plans that I saw didn't have that on there. But then again, it didn't have this thing either. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm hoping that that'll be enough air for the, for the worms um, uh, all the way down to the bottom. I don't have any vent holes in the bottom either, and that may be a mistake, but I haven't seen it anywhere. Um, where people put a ton of holes in them. The ones that have is because their containers fit together real, real tight, and uh, they're pro or fairly tight, and uh, I don't think you're going to get much air through that. Um, but I may yet um, drill a couple holes in the sides um, for a little better ventilation. Um, the top is sitting down inside of there. Like I showed you before, that'll fit in there. And we'll start with the first tray, and we'll put you know, our newspaper and compost and worms and all that good stuff in there. And let them just work their way through that, and we'll go to the next tray and the next tray, and then by the time we get to the top tray, the bottom tray should be finished, and we can just pull that bucket out, and um, uh, I guess do whatever you got to do, let it dry out and sift it or whatever, and now you've got uh, worm compost. And of course, the whole time we should be getting some tea out of that bottom spigot down there. And uh, these are not too heavy to lift. I don't know how much they'll weigh with worms in them, but probably not more than about five or ten pounds. Because they're not very big. They're, they're nowhere near the size of uh, um, like the worm factories and things like that. I think they're probably about half that size. And they say they weigh about 18 pounds. So I'm guessing probably 10 pounds. But anyway, it probably took about, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, something like that to finish this thing. hour and a half probably. And uh, now I've got a big old mess to clean up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or somebody's going to beat me over the head. And, um, and that's it. So I'll, I'll have to do an update on this once I get some worms and stuff in it. But I just wanted to show you the finished product, and it's not very hard. And again, for uh, WROL SHTF stuff, um, this is a real cheap way to create some great compost, um, some great fertilizer for plants. And um, from what I understand, they just explode when you put this stuff into them.